What is up guys? Welcome back to my channel where I put out new photography related content every single Monday. So if you like this video and you want to see more like it, you can check out the other videos on my channel or you can subscribe to get a new video every single Monday. Today's video is going to be a kind of a review, if you would, of novelty cameras. <laughs> so I talked about novelty film stocks before on this channel and I talked about a bunch that I had used and a bunch that looked cool and all of the weird kind of lomographic things that you would do with these novelty films. And now we are doing the other side of the equation, which is novelty cameras. So most of the cameras in this video are going to be 35mm film cameras, but there are a few digital cameras in there and there's a few oddballs, <laughs> I guess you could call them. Most of the cameras are available on eBay or through purchase on Lomography.com or on b &H Photo. So if you wanted to try out any of the cameras you see in this video, with a few very specific exceptions, you can, you can go and buy them. <laughs> and in researching this video, I bought at least one, <laughs> perhaps two. There's a, there's a second one in my cart as we speak. Uh, they're hard to resist. I've actually only tried one or two of the cameras in this video, and I don't have a lot of example photos that I've taken. So all of the example photos you see in this video will be things that I found online and where I can, I'll include the credit in the screenshot, blah, blah, blah. So without further ado, let's talk about the weirdest novelty cameras that I could find online. This first section is called toy cameras. And toy cameras make up like the bulk of novelty cameras that I could find. So the first one is a classic. It is the Holga. You have definitely seen photos taken with a Holga before. It is one of the most beloved cameras for lomography. There's also the Diana and it is <laughs> like the definition of a toy camera. It looks like baby's first press release. And uh, I actually recently bought a lens attachment that is meant to go in the Diana but will adapt to my Nikon camera. <laughs> So I'm gonna do some fun things with that in the future, but it creates like these dreamy images with light leaks and intense vignetting and just classic Lomography look. Another one uh, that is a Lomography favorite is the Lomography Fish Eye 1 and it creates circular images that look so cool. Oh my god, these images. Can you imagine doing like a set of these images where they all feature different objects caught with like a really harsh strobe light? It'd be really hard to rig up the strobes because it's, it's a toy camera, <laughs> but something like that would be so cool. And the examples online are just so full of color and vibrance and the black outline I think really helps with that. Cool camera. If you're looking for an alternative fisheye camera, there's the Demikin Fisheye 110 and that captures fisheye images on 110 film, which is that really weird small one. And it looks like, like a robot's eye implant. Like doesn't it, like a Borg, you know? This one would take the cake for weirdest looking camera on this toy cameras list if I didn't have a whole category of weird looking toy cameras. <laughs> and the first one is the Coca-Cola can camera. I don't know why this was made. <laughs> There's so many versions of it too, but it's a 35 millimeter camera inside a Coca-Cola can and it can be disguised as a Coca-Cola can. So if you put it down on the beach, maybe somebody picks it up thinking it's a can and takes it. <laughs> it seems easy to lose, <laughs> to be honest with you, but I love the concept. And I love that it is such a cult classic that it's been remade like a thousand times. There's also just this compilation of strangely shaped toy cameras that falls into the same genre as the Coke can camera. These don't do anything interesting to the film. I think they're just like, you know, crappy toy point and shoots basically, but they look hilarious. <laughs> like, I just love the weird molded plastic, like this one. Like, why would you, why would you make this into a camera? I, I like it, I dig it. These are fun. Next, we have the cereal box cameras, which were a promotional item that was common, I think, throughout the 90s and early 2000s. Personally, I think, like, I do remember getting one of these in a cereal box. My parents would never let me have, like, any kind of sugary cereal, but because there was the camera promotion one time, I did get sugary cereal. <laughs> These actually, Bow Photo in Vancouver, the, the photo store, has like a huge collection of these cereal box cameras and of the novelty like shaped cameras. So if you're in Vancouver and you want one of these, you can go on down to Bow Photo. They are affordably priced. Okay, the next genre of toy camera is underwater cameras. And some of these have really cool design. Like I really like the design of this one. And some of them are super, super ugly. <laughs> And I have never tried an underwater camera personally, but I've seen people on Reddit who've tried them and they say that unless you're shooting with it underwater, the plastic in front of the lens like just makes every photo blurry, <laughs> which I totally believe that. I'm sure there's exceptions. I'm sure you can get good photos out of it, but you almost exclusively need to shoot these toy cameras underwater. They are designed to be shot underwater. So yeah, I got kind of curious when I was researching these to see if there was a Pokemon toy camera because I love Pokemon and Pokemon has many toys associated with it and surely they've made a camera and it turns out that they have. <laughs> they made 
a few, but this one I think is my favorite because it exposes every image with this horrifying border. <laughs> and I love it. I love the nostalgia factor. It just like tickles that little part of my brain that lights up when I see something Pokemon related, but oh my God, like I don't know how you would incorporate this into a good looking photo. <laughs> Great, 10 out of 10. I absolutely want one of these cameras. I will not rest until I get one of these cameras. It's like, I'm manifesting it. It's, it's on my intention board right now. <laughs> and I will do my absolute best to take some good pictures with it because I, I feel confident. It's misguided confident, but I feel it. Okay, and then there's this one, which is a modern toy camera. And this prints out the images that it takes onto thermal paper, so like receipt paper. And receipt paper, if you guys don't know, it does fade over time. Like if you ever try to keep receipts for longer than a year, you'll notice they're just blank. But I find this one super fun and I would absolutely love to get my hands on one of these and try out some like weird image collages with it because the images actually look kind of cool. And if they didn't fade, they'd be great for like journaling and whatever. It's pitched as a way for kids to like make collages and scrapbooks and stuff. I think this is a really cute idea like for a kid, but I also think that lomographers would have a bit of a field day with it. And there's a ton of different versions of this camera that print out images onto thermal paper. It is quite a popular gimmick in the children's toy genre of camera. So moving away from toy cameras, although I'm pretty sure most of the cameras in the next list can also be counted as toy cameras, but they fall into another genre as well. And that is multi-image cameras. So multi-image cameras take one frame of usually 35 millimeter film and expose multiple images on it. The first one is the golden half camera, which is apparently a cult classic. I'd never heard of it, but I want it. <laughs> and it takes two images on one frame of film and it retails for around $170. <laughs> so, oh my God, that's more than I paid for my really nice like Nikon F801S that I've talked your ear off about at this point. <laughs> There's also the action sampler, which takes four images, four, four images <laughs> on a single frame. So you can actually take four times as many photos on a roll of film, but it takes them like, in a second. So you can get something like a car moving by and it goes boop, 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 and you get like that kind of gif. And there's programs that you can use to put it together into a gif and like play it. And they're really popular on Tumblr and really cool. So I got one of those. You're gonna see a video about it at some point in the future. I am absolutely sure of that. And I got this on BH Photo for like $40 or something. And it was the thing that made my order over $100. So I got free shipping because otherwise shipping would have been like $27. So basically I was like save money. There's also the super sampler, which takes four frames as well, but it takes them as vertical bars instead of like one, two, three, four. It takes one, two, three, four. There's the Octomat, which takes eight images on a single frame. And you may be noticing a trend <laughs> because there's also the Pop9, which takes nine images. But I think the difference between the Pop9 and the other ones in this category is that the Pop9 just like goes bop and then exposes nine images all at the same time. Whereas the rest of these cameras take like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And so you can make like a little movie out of them. You can't make a movie out of the Pop9, but I have seen people do cool things with the Pop9 where they put like different colored gels in front of each tiny little lens. And then you get nine images, but it's like pop art. I think that's pretty cool. And then finally, <laughs> as the crown jewel of this section, you have the Calamar Action Shot 16, which takes you guessed it, 16 images. And so this is like kind of like almost like a mini video camera that like you can take really, really lo-fi video with it. The next set of images is panoramic cameras. So the first one is the Lomography Spinner. So that's like this tiny weird little camera on a stick that's got like a thing that you can pull. And as you pull it, it goes whew, and it takes like this huge panoramic image. Pretty cool, probably pretty expensive in terms of like how much film it uses. And if you like mess up, spinning it, then you've just eaten through that amount of film with very little reward. Not so great. But there's also the Horizon 202, which is a plastic camera with an ultra wide lens that captures images that are twice as long as a regular 35 millimeter frame. So the last section is all about saving film and capturing multiple images each frame. And this one is about using as much film as possible. And I know that was a short section, but now I want to move on to the digital novelty cameras because <laughs> these ones are so goofy. So the first one is not goofy at all. And the first one is one that I actually do really want someday. And it is the paper shoot camera. It's super, super thin and it creates images that look like they were taken on film. So it's kind of digital lomography. It's a cool idea for a camera. It's small. It would be a lot of fun to make a video out of. And it comes in a lot of really cool designs as well. There's the Game Boy camera, which another, oh, it's another one. It's on my wish list. I want this so bad. It is a Game Boy cartridge that like fits into your Game Boy color. And the camera takes super low res photos, like super low res. It's so cool. It is digital lomography, like the very like essence of digital lomography is this Game Boy camera. And there are so many videos out there of photographers doing their, their thing with a Game Boy camera. I, oh my God, it's so much fun. A fun fact, at the time that it came out, it was 
the smallest digital camera available. <laughs> so that's a bonus with the Game Boy camera. So the next digital camera is the Light L16, and this one is not lomography per se, because it actually produces very sharp, well-rendered images. The reason why it's called the L16 is because it's got 16 lenses. And so because it takes 16 images and then puts them into a composite, it actually allows you to alter the focus of the image after the image is taken. I think that's pretty cool. I can't really visualize what that would look like, but I dig the idea. And then our last digital novelty camera is the YI Technology Halo. <laughs> which has 17 images arranged to capture a 360 degree view. And it creates like these three dimensional photos and videos, like photosphere kind of thing, right? And this is great if you are an event photographer slash videographer, and you wanna capture an entire like panorama of a venue, you can do that with this camera. And you can do it if you have $17,000 to spend on this thing. Oh my God. Okay, so our last section is a bonus section, and it is pre-modern novelty cameras. These are not ones that you can buy currently, uh, but they are cool nonetheless, and I wanted to chat about a few of them. So there's George Lawrence's giant camera, and I think a lot of people see this image and think that all cameras looked like this at some point in the past, and no, this guy was just a maniac, and he really wanted to capture an entire train in one single image with each individual car. So he did, and here's the image. And it, I think it worked pretty well. Like that, that's a huge photo. I would like to see like the actual pan that that came off of, but pretty cool. Kudos to George Lawrence. And there's the Leica DMR, which was a hybrid between digital and film cameras. So it allowed you to choose whether you would like to capture an image digitally or on film, which today I think would qualify as kind of gimmicky, but at the time was completely revolutionary and set you back $6,000 in typical Leica fashion. And then so another one of my favorites is the Zenit Photo Sniper, which looks exactly like what it sounds. It was a Soviet era gun-shaped photo used for battlefield photography, but it's also good because you can train soldiers to aim properly because it takes a picture of whatever they're aiming at and so it'll tell you if they hit it or not, which I guess if film is cheaper than bullets makes sense. But if it's not, then like, wouldn't they just like, why not just aim with a BB gun and practice it that way? I don't know. It seems a little bit convoluted to me, but it's a weird looking camera, isn't it? And there's a few of those. There's also the Dory 216, which is similar to the photo sniper and is shaped like a pistol and was apparently used by law enforcement and surveillance personnel, which I cannot, I cannot imagine a situation in which pulling a gun on somebody is like less conspicuous than pulling a camera on somebody. So why you would want a camera shaped like a gun that is just super easily recognizable as a gun, I can't imagine, but they did. So yeah, <laughs> that is my entire list of novelty cameras. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, you can leave a like, you can leave a comment, letting me know if I missed any important novelty cameras that really have a special place in your heart and you were sad that I didn't mention them. I did try to find like a very comprehensive list. And if you've tried out any of these cameras and had interesting results, also let me know about those down in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will be back next week, maybe with another film photography related video. I don't quite know yet, but we will see. And if you got any ideas, you can also leave those down in the comment section. <laughs> Thank you guys again for watching. I really appreciate it. I will see you next Monday. And in the meantime, I want you to stay sharp and don't forget to keep shooting. Bye guys.